This is Dave Beam with uh, SkyBridge Global responding to our brief conversation yesterday about approval hierarchies and I mentioned how flexible they are and I wanted to show you uh, briefly how flexible they are because it's almost unbelievable until you see it. There's almost nothing you can't do. I gotta say almost because as soon as I say there's nothing you can't do, somebody will find something. So there's almost <laughs> nothing you can't do. So I'll just give you a taste and then I'll at least give you an idea of what is out there. My only caution is don't go nuts. If you go <laughs> nuts, you got the maintenance, okay? So just do what, you know, your segregation of duties and your security rules um, for your corporation uh, that you really need, you know, don't, don't go nuts. Um, I'm gonna go to manage approval groups. It brings up the thing called BPM work list that you might have noticed me mentioning yesterday. Um, I don't know what BPM stands for. This is where all of the approval hierarchies are held. I'm sure it stands for something, approval hierarchy, maybe in a foreign language, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but to change them, uh, you have to have the right um, authority. Thank God, you have to right, have the right security. I have given myself pretty much all security. Um, you have to be administrator, so I go into administration. I go to task configuration, and the tasks that I'm configuring are all of the approval hierarchies that I can create or edit, okay? And as you can see here, in EBS there were maybe, I don't know, 15, 20, I don't know. In cloud, there are literally hundreds. I'm only on F, and what did it say? I'm on 160 some. I mean, there are 500, 600, maybe, I don't know, maybe 1,000, I don't know. So I'm just gonna do one real quick. Uh, what did we talk about yesterday? We talked about payables, right? So I'm gonna go um, invoices. So I'm gonna just do that for invoices. Uh, AP invoice approval. Now one thing, when you are going to change it, uh, this is just something a lot of people forget, is this tiny little pencil is what's called edit. And this is what allows me to edit instead of just view um, the approval hierarchy. So I'm gonna click on edit, which gives me the right to edit. Here it is, I know that it's supplier invoice uh, requires approval. I'm gonna click on assignees. This is the approval hierarchy. You can tell what is enabled because some are blue, the rest of them are grayed out. This one is just kind of a generic one saying that somebody has flipped on the switch saying that invoice approval is turned on. But this here, uh, invoice document approvers, is where you define the approvers. Um, there are a lot of different types of approver uh, hierarchies. This one, if I have her here, is a serial hierarchy, which means it's one, two, three, four, five. It goes down the line. As we talked about before, you can't have it hit every single person down the line, or you can have it go straight to the person with uh, the correct um, authority. It's completely your choice. There's also things like uh, parallel, which means that if you define five or six people with the exact same uh, hierarchy, or I'm sorry, uh, approval hierarchy, why am I saying hierarchy? Approval uh, authority, then the first one that gets there can approve it and nobody else has to. Um, it's good for if people go on vacation and they forget to do their um, vacation um, message. Anyway, okay, so I am gonna choose this uh, serial which has already been activated and everything has a rule that you have to set up. So I hover here, click on go to rule. 
And here are all of the different types just within, um, just within approval invoices. Um, there are all sorts of ways, places that I can set the approval. It doesn't have to be at the header level. It can be at the line level. It can be at the description level. It can be at the supplier level. It can be at the, it can be all over the place. I mean, um, it's, like I say, almost ridiculous how much, how flexible this is. But, you know, I guess it's a good thing. So the main one here is uh, invoice approval rule set. This is where you put total dollar amount for the invoice. So I'm going to choose this one. Somebody has been in here for, I guess, for CRP one and set up a few. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, won't even look at it. I'm just going to, what's nice is you can copy it. Once you create one, you don't have to do it over and over again. Um, you can just copy it and then change it. So I'm going to copy, uh, paste. Now I've got two, but I'm going to change this one. So I'm going to just put, I'm going to delete it and all the Dave. Um, so now I'm going to look at my rule. And it's saying here, if the invoice amount is less than a thousand bucks, and it's an invoice, it's a standard invoice, then let's see what happens. Then it's approved. Wow. So if it's a standard invoice, it's less than a thousand bucks. According to this, nobody has to approve it, which may go against uh, uh, C-Core's rules, but somebody set this up. So, um, you know, I can certainly change this to whatever I want using the existing parameters. But what I want to show you is all of the different parameters. Let's suppose that I want to say um, it's the invoice amount and also the type of, not the invoice type. Let's choose something more interesting. And here are all of my subject areas that I can choose from. Go all the way down here. So I can say, um, in order for it to be approved, I am going to have to define, it has to be this specific job. So I can actually choose a job code if I wanted to. Or I could say, if it's a thousand bucks, and also the person's manager is Joe Blow. Well, I like Joe Blow, so I'm not going to ever disagree with his subordinates <laughs> or whatever. Um, the position name, we're not using a position, so it doesn't matter. I could choose any of that. Um, if I'm choosing line level stuff, I could say the invoice distribution. If I'm if I want to keep on the header level, I can choose something on the header level, such as um, a descriptive flex field. I could put, uh, what else? Did I skip something? I guess I did. Um, what organization you belong to, I can put, um, you know, so many different choices. You name it, it's probably out here. Um, the invoice date, invoice ID, invoice line, all of these things I can say, um, this is going to be a condition for which the invoice can be approved. So, um, uh, instead of creating something goofy, I'll just say um, it has to have a PO, so I'm going to go ahead and say that PO header ID uh, let's see here. Now normally you can put in if you know if it's a person's name or if it's a um, job or if it's a position or something like that, you can type it in in quotation marks, but you don't have to do that. I'm just saying that 
PO header ID. Um, I don't really care if it's uppercase or lowercase. What I'm trying to get at is that if it I was looking for does not exist. I don't see it there. Seems strange, but all the same, I'll just put something that I know won't be there, which is like uh, the number one. <laughs> so never uh, will I ever find a PO with the number one. So um, if I wanted to, I could say, okay, if it's a thousand dollars, then this is this approval action is never going to go through because the PO because it's an and the PO. Um, oh wait, I should say is the PO isn't going to be one. It's going to be something else. It's going to be one zero zero nine eight seven five, right? So. This is never this uh, nothing is ever going to meet this criteria is what I'm trying to say. Um, so it's going to bypass and reject this uh, approval rule, um, and then I'll look for the next one, which will be could be for the larger dollar amount, um, and it'll see if it bypasses that rule, um, or if it can pass that rule, and if it can then it'll look at whatever belongs there. If it's less than $2,000 and it's to this um, cost center and this manager, and then go ahead and approve it. Um, and when I'm finished, I'm not going to save this, but when I'm finished, I just simply save it and it's done. And as soon as I uh, go back to AP, that will be in place. And just to show you that they're all pretty much the same, they work the same. Let me just get out of here so nothing saves. <sighs> same thing is true for, I think you guys mentioned you want to do GL approvals. So here, FN uh, journal approvals. And uh, click on the pencil to say that I want to change it, and it works the same way. Let's see if anything's been done here. So nothing's been done here. Well, let me see. Again, is it serial? Let's see if uh, somebody's set something up. Oh, somebody has. Yes, looks like manager approval rule. Let's see what this one says. So this one says that it follows the supervisory list. And if the task creator is me, meaning the user, that's what the negative one means, and the top participant is me, then it will not approve. That's all it's saying. So it's basically saying that I cannot um, approve my own journal. That's all it's saying. Very simple rule. If I wanted to here, I could create separate levels and say from, let's say to $500, I don't need approval. From $500 to, I don't know, $1,000, uh, $2,000, it needs approval by my supervisor. From $2,000 to $5,000, it needs my supervisor, supervisor, and so on. And I would name either the person's name if I wanted to, or their job, or whatever makes sense. Um, for your company. And then again, you just simply save it and um, you're off to the races. So that um, that's just a real quick look at uh, how easy it is to set up um, the uh, approval hierarchies and how flexible, that's the most important thing, how flexible it is to do so. All right, thanks so much for watching.
Thanks for hacking.